Freeman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. It's 637 on the morning majority, and we are talking to Jim Carafano of the Heritage Foundation, National Security Analyst. How's it going, Jim? Hey, good to be with you. Uh, let me ask you about Iraq. It's, it's the story seems to be, as soon as we roll over the border into Kuwait, out of Iraq, uh, Maliki starts arresting his Sunni opposition. Is that what happened, and what does this mean? Well, I, I don't think we're really quite sure yet what happened, but th- the fact that the Sunnis and the Shias started going after each other as soon as the U.S. rolled out the door, well, that just seems so predictable. Uh, look. I mean, here's the deal. You know, there's three, there's three group, major groups in Iraq. You know, the Kurds in, in the north, and the Kurds won in this day. I mean, Kurdistan's been very successful. They've always been very pro-American. Even when Saddam was there, they were very pro-American. They, they love us. They would love for us to stay. Matter of fact, they would love for us to stay. We could trade them for Vermont. They'd be very happy. <laughs> so, so in Vermont. But um, the, the Sunnis actually wanted us to stay, which is ironic, since the Sunnis were actually the ones that put Saddam in power. But but they're a minority in the country, and they really saw the U.S. there as as protection against the Shias. And the Shias, you know, are really split the pro-Iranian Shias or the or Iranian uh, um, Iraqi, but are not pro-Iranian. Uh, Maliki is, is is a Shia. They are the majority of the country. They're the majority of the parliament. So at least at least two thirds of the country would really, if if you if they really were honest, would really say we'd much be rather happy if the Americans were here. And that that is what. Uh, President Obama has done is basically he has t- taken away the safety net, uh, the, the the check of the United States. There now, this is think how different this is from from West Germany. West Germany doesn't have a Conrad Adenauer. The United States, in a sense, really ceded over political power. I mean, we didn't leave West Germany, but when we ceded over political power to the West Germans, Conrad Adenauer by that time had solidified political control over the time. He did this democratically. I mean, he wasn't a dictator. He had solidified political control over the country, and he was he was solidly pro-Western, and he was in the Western camp. And quite honestly, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that there were Soviet troops on the border, the United States could have left Germany in 1955, and you know, and never looked back. Um, that that's not the situation that we have in Iraq today. But, but isn't that inevitable? No matter what time we leave, whether it's today or whether it's 10 years from now or 20 years from now, that there's still going to be this fight, this struggle between the Sunnis and the Shias. Oh no, I, I don't think that's true. I mean, you know, it, the, that's the problem with countries like Iraq is when, when you overthrow the government is there are no political traditions, no standards, there are no culture. And, but you can build those even in a decade. If you look at a place like Austria, which is another country that we are occupied. I mean, there were there were three political parties in Austria that that were totally committed to hating each other. But over the decade of the U.S. occupation, they adapted a political strategy that says, "Look, we will do nothing unless we all, all agree." Uh, and then eventually they start to not marginalize the communists and push the communists out. But 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 in a decade, Austria went from being one of those vicious political cultures in Western Europe to being one of the calmest. So I, I do believe you can do this, but but it doesn't happen in New York minute. Oftentimes, it will take a decade or more, which is why we were, I mean, we stayed in, 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 in Europe forever because of the Soviets, but, but, but we stayed for a prolonged period after World War II because we didn't want it to be like after World War I. You know, we had a U.S. occupation force in the Rhineland in Germany. We stayed less than a year, and then you know, everybody left, and, of course, you, you know what happened in Germany. So uh, when you look at the, the, the stakes of having a peaceful and stable Iraq and, and what that means to U.S. interests, and what it was costing us, which was what? Basically 50 U.S. troops sitting around pretty much doing nothing. Um, that, that was not a very big price to pay. But, uh, but I think it's more important that the president get reelected and, and be able to you know, put up his mission accomplished banner than, than to really ensure and protect American interests over the long term. Can I ask you about North Korea? Kim Jong Il is dead. Uh, just uh, almost hours after he uh, his his death was announced, uh, they're firing off missiles, uh, and there was some concern about the nuclear program in North Korea being under proper control. I mean, uh, should we be concerned about the Norks nukes? Well, uh, you know, the, the missile firing thing's interesting. You know, this, that's not the first time this has happened where we've seen missile firings that may or may not have been timed with other things and may or may not have been sending signals. And because the North Korean government is so opaque, 
we oftentimes can't figure out when they are sending signals or when the part of the government that's controlling something isn't talking to the part of the government that's controlling <laughs> something else. So I'm not sure we can definitively say uh, that the North Koreans are sending a signal here. Maybe they are. Uh, maybe they're not. I'm, 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 I mean, I haven't seen, and of course it's an incredibly opaque regime. We don't know about bad things until they get announced. But I haven't seen a lot of concern about the control of the North Korean program uh, more than concern is the control of the North Korean program because part of that control is proliferating as widely and aggressively as possible, and uh, and that's what makes this regime so so incredibly dangerous. Do you? I, mean, I didn't hear a lot of optimism at all from any of the uh, pundits yesterday, the experts on this. But is there any optimism in your point of view from the fact that Kim Jong Il is dead? That there may be a falling at least, and you know how hard this government is led, or that the military may take control and they may say, you know, we need to have move a, a, a different direction. I, you know, I suppose anything is possible. You, you know, you look at Burma and. Uh, and the, the uh, really for Burma the unbelievable progress. I mean, who knows if it's going to be sustained or not? But that, that you've seen there, so you never say never. But that would be a, a I think a surprise that nobody would anticipate. Uh, you know, a thawing of of North Korea. I mean, it, 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 you know, North Korea is probably the most difficult country in the world for that actually to happen because there is nothing there. I mean, they've drained the nation mm-hmm. dry to do two things, which is maintain a military, uh, build a nuclear weapon program, and, you know, and keep a handful of people in Chevis Regal. But, um, uh, you know, it, it, it would be, opening up in North Korea would be incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, precarious for the regime. So I, all things are possible. But I, uh, like everybody, I mean, anybody who says, Anything other than sit back, buckle up, and, and you know get ready for a roll, year, at least a year on a roller coaster, I think, is it, just guessing. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. When when the political candidates and presidential candidates are asked about that, they sound a little Herman Cain-esque with the I would consult with experts. But in this case, that's actually the best you can do, it seems like. What is the proper answer for somebody who's running for president to say when you have so little information? Uh, well, you know, you, you don't even bother consulting with the experts because the experts are just going to sit there and shrug their shoulders <laughs> and say, we don't know. I mean, this is the way it is with these, you know, uh, incredibly closed regimes. I mean, you, you just you just don't know a lot about what's going on inside. And, and when something like this happens,